Hello and welcome to the StriveScan Virtual College Exploration Program in partnership with CTCL, the Colleges That Change Lives. We have Morgan here from Goucher College and we will- Guilford uh, College, Dave, Excuse sorry. me, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> Guilford College. You're My good? apologies. My apologies. Uh, Guilford College. And um, we will be getting started here in just a second. Just for everyone in the audience, just so you know, you can question, ask your questions at any point in time by clicking on the Q&A button on your screen and type your questions to Morgan or Ben here. Um, for everyone in the audience, know that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And uh, we've got a few more sessions, CTCL school sessions that are happening this evening. You can check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL. And you can find all of the recordings there for all the previous sessions as well. And this session will be available, that recording will be available at that same website. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Morgan and uh, start your presentation. Take it away, Morgan. Thank you, Dan, appreciate it. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Morgan and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at Guilford College in Greensboro, North Carolina. We have one of our students, uh, Ben, joining us as well. Ben, would you introduce yourself? Hey everybody, my name is Ben James. I'm a junior this year. We start classes tomorrow and we can go over a few of, of what I, you want me to talk about what I do on campus and things like yeah, that. Yeah, Ben, that would be awesome if you'll kind of include that in your introduction. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. I'm an economics major and a Spanish and business minor. I'm a Bonner Scholar and I'm on the soccer and track team here at Guilford. There are other few things, but we can talk about that um, within athletics and the economics department. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right, everybody, I'm going to share my screen with you to start the presentation. As Dan said, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type those into the chat box and we will take some time at the end uh, to answer those questions. Uh, so to start out, um, Guilford is located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, if you're not familiar with North Carolina geography, uh, Greensboro is kind of in the center of the state in between Charlotte and Raleigh. We are the third largest city in North Carolina. Um, where Guilford's campus is located, we're about 10 minutes away from downtown. Uh, so not a bad drive at all. If you have a car, you can head down or you can catch a ride with a friend. Um, if you wanna go have some dinner or um, go to a concert or have a fun night out. Um, a few things that um, are interesting about the city of Greensboro is that we are truly a college town. Um, there are eight schools um, within kind of the greater Greensboro area that comprise the greater Greensboro consortium. Uh, and the cool thing about that is that students actually have the opportunity uh, if they would like to take classes on other of those on other schools campuses. Um, so if there's a class that you're interested in um, that maybe we don't offer here at Guilford, but North Carolina A&T offers, for example, um, you can head over to A&T and take that course uh, because you're a Guilford student and Guilford is part of the consortium. Um, a few things that students enjoy um, about being in Greensboro are the North Carolina Folk Festival, um, all of the musical acts that come to the Greensboro Coliseum, um, the International Civil Rights Center and Museum, uh, and the new Tanger Center for the Performing Arts, or just to name a few things um, that are iconic to our city. A little history about Guilford. Um, we were founded in 1837 um, by the Quakers or the Society of Friends. Um, we did start with 25 men and 25 women in our first class. Uh, so that actually makes Guilford the third oldest co-ed institution in the country and the oldest co-ed institution in the South. Uh, even though we are Quaker founded, um, you do not have to be Quaker to attend Guilford, um, less than 10% of our current student body actually identifies as Quaker. Uh, you will see a few Quaker traditions around campus though that will become part of your everyday life here as a Guilford College student. Um, things such as uh, starting a class or a gathering or a meeting with a moment of silence and also calling your professors and other staff members on campus um, by their first name. Um, pulling from our Quaker tradition on campus, we have seven core values, community, diversity, equality, excellence, integrity, justice, and stewardship. Uh, to give you a little bit of information about kind of what makes up our student body and who we are um, here at Guilford. Uh, so we have about 1500 students on campus, um, representing a pretty large number of states in 16 countries. 
Um, our average class size is approximately 13, although there is some variation in that. You could have a class that's a little bit smaller. You could also have a class um, that's a little bit larger as well. Um, we have a variety of different majors and minors that students can choose to focus their study in, but our largest programs are business, business administration, psychology, biology, criminal justice, and sports studies. Um, we also have a graduate program in criminal justice where students can obtain their master's degree as well. And as you are aware of, uh, we are part of CTCL um, and proud to be a part of colleges that change lives here at Guilford, uh, representing the state of North Carolina. Uh, so to give you an idea of the different majors and programs that we have on campus, um, I've included this slide which details our pathways. Uh, so when students come to Guilford, we don't immediately ask you to declare a major. Um, we want to give students time to take classes, to explore, to ask questions, to have conversations. Um, so what we do instead is that we ask students to identify a pathway um, that includes majors that they might be interested in. Um, this allows you to keep your options open, but it also allows us to partner a staff member with you to better advise you based on the things that you're interested in. Uh, so we have four pathways on campus. Uh, social and linguistic studies is one of our pathways. It includes, includes majors like sociology, um, poli-sci, religion, um, our foreign language programs, and English. Uh, math management and technology is another pathway for students that are interested in business administration, sports management, um, our computing technology majors, um, CTIS and cyber network security. Um, ben falls into this pathway as an economics major. Ben's like, what, what? <laughs> Natural science studies for students that are interested in the sciences. If you're interested in like pre-med, pre-dentistry, um, biology, pre-veterinarian studies, um, public health, um, geology and environmental studies, then you would fall into the natural sciences pathway. And finally, artistic and human studies for students that are interested in majors like criminal justice, psychology, art, theater, music, and education. Uh, so here at Guilford, um, we have kind of redefined what the student experience looks like um, and are now calling that experience the Guilford Edge. Um, the Edge contains four components, Edge, Discover, Gain, and Experience. And we're gonna jump into those here in the next couple of slides. Um, so the first tenet of the Guilford Edge is explore. Um, we wanna give students the opportunity um, to not just sit in a classroom, but to have the opportunity to engage in hands-on learning, um, collaborative learning, and non-traditional learning experiences. One of the biggest ways that um, Guilford is um, working to provide these experiences for students is through a unique semester calendar. Um, so here at Guilford, um, each semester consists of two different pieces. Uh, the first piece is a three-week class and the second piece is a 12 week kind of traditional semester where you take multiple classes at the same time. Uh, the fall semester actually starts with the three week class and then you go into your 12 week traditional term. Uh, the spring semester starts with your 12 week traditional term and ends with the three week class. Uh, during the three week session, you only take one class and you focus on that class for the entire three weeks. Uh, but the neat thing about uh, this time during each semester is that you don't have to be on campus taking a class. Um, you can actually go on a study abroad experience or go on a trip to a different city within the United States um, for a study away experience. Um, you can also do an internship for course credit during this time. Um, or of course you can be either on campus or online taking a class as well if that's a better fit for you. Unfortunately, uh, due to COVID, many study abroad and study away opportunities have been postponed, uh, but we're looking forward to getting back uh, to doing those as soon as possible. Uh, so the next tenet of the Guilford Edge is discover. Uh, we wanna give students the support that they need uh, to discover what they're passionate about and where they want to go in the future. Uh, so here at Guilford, we want to create a team of advisors for every student. Uh, to make sure that they uh, have the, the team and the tools that they need to succeed. Uh, so the first person that will be um, partnered with you as an advisor is your Guilford guide. Uh, so when you come in as a freshman and you move in and you start your first year, 
um, the person that works with you to help you register for classes for your first semester and will continue to work with you uh, throughout your time on campus is your Guilford guide uh, or your academic uh, Guilford guide. Um, once you're an upperclassman, you'll also be partnered with a career Guilford guide. Um, so your academic guide uh, will help you with class registration and mapping out your course schedule um, and kind of figuring out um, what your passions are and how that might translate into a major here at Guilford. Uh, your career advising guide uh, will help you with things such as resumes, interviewing skills, um, finding internships, and certainly preparing for what's ahead after you graduate, whether that be graduate school um, or going into the workforce. Uh, each student also is partnered with a professor um, after you declare a major that will also serve as an additional advisor to you. And we also have um, alumni resources on campus and peer mentors who are upperclassmen that work with our younger students um, to get them started and to get them um, prepared for what's to come when they become an upperclassman. So the next tenet of the Guilford Edge is gain. Um, what's so important throughout your college experience is that outside of the classroom, um, you engage fully in the opportunities um, that are given to you and that are available through the institution that you choose to attend. Um, here at Guilford, we wanna make sure that our students are gaining um, communication skills, leadership skills. And we have a variety of different um, campus programs that allow students to really tap into that and to receive uh, some really outstanding um, development and mentorship. Um, some of those programs include our Multicultural Leadership Scholars Program, uh, our Quaker Leadership Scholars Program, and our Bonner Scholars Program, which is through our Bonner Center for Community Service and Learning. Um, and I am going to ask Ben, if you don't mind, um, to give a quick overview of Bonner, um, since I know you're a part of that program. Yeah, Bonner is a, is, as it says, Community Service and Learning Program. It's pretty difficult to describe it in a short time, but you're chosen. There's 15 students in each class that are chosen and we do 140 hours of service per semester and 280 hours for two summers. You do get a large financial help. You get large financial help with this, but we want to mainly focus on service. And it can seem discouraging at first going into it because as you go into service, you have to learn first. And that's why we put in the learning part. So we don't want to go in with good intentions to a community where, okay, well, I grew up in a suburb of Philadelphia and that's what it, the suburb of Greensboro needs. So Bonner is really focusing on not being a Band-Aid, but trying to be a surgeon in, in the service realm. So if that interests you or if, you, if you've done service in your time in high school, you can join any one of these, but Bonner especially will help you financially and also give you a cohort where you are continuing to get work, study money, and also gain valuable experience. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, and for any of you guys that are interested in learning more about Bonner, um, we're going to talk about that application process at the end as well. All right, so the last tenet of the Guilford Edge is experience. Um, one of the big pieces of, uh, one of the big pieces that affects your experience here at Guilford is the amount of support that you have both in and out of the classroom. Um, so it is important to mention that um, we do offer free uh, mental health counseling on campus for all students um, through our counseling services. Um, students can also um, receive academic support uh, through our Learning Commons and our Writing Center. Uh, so you can get a tutor or you can sit down with someone uh, to help you with a paper or an essay, um, whatever you need to be as successful as you can be. Um, if anyone needs any accommodations, either in or outside of the classroom, um, you can work with one of our Accessibility Resource Center counselors and they'll create an accommodation plan that best fits you. Um, in addition to uh, community support, um, we have a variety of clubs, organizations, arts and athletics on campus um, that students will enjoy um, getting involved in and that will really um, heighten your Guilford College experience um, as a college student. Um, we do also have a tradition on campus called Serendipity. Uh, Serendipity is a spring music festival. Uh, it's kind of like Guilford's version of Spring Fling, um, usually happening close to the end of spring semester and is a, a really awesome week of fun activities and music um, for students on campus. Um, the picture on the left here is one of our residence halls. Um, we have a large portion of students that do live on campus here at Guilford. Looks slightly different due to COVID at this time, uh, but during a normal year, I guess you could say we have a large number of students 
uh, that live here at Guilford on campus. And that's one of the things that really makes your experience um, the best that it can possibly be. Uh, so to talk a little bit about um, some of the different, uh, different experiences that I mentioned in the slide before, um, we do have 50 plus um, academic, social, and religious based clubs on campus. Uh, some examples of some pretty popular clubs include student government, um, Ultimate Frisbee, um, Outdoors Club, um, Pride, um, Black Student Union, um, Food Justice Club, um, the, the Community and Culture Step Team, and there's a few others that I've listed on the slide um, that you can read, but those are just a few examples of all of the different opportunities that students have uh, to be involved here at Guilford. And we also have a very rich arts scene here at Guilford. Um, students have the opportunity to participate in the visual arts, um, whether you're a major or minor or you're just interested in the arts, you can take classes or you can participate in events. Um, students also have the opportunity to participate in both vocal and instrumental music on campus. Um, we have a guitar, a classical guitar ensemble, um, a jazz uh, band and also jazz combos every semester. And we have three choirs on campus, uh, including our college choir, which is based in classical music, um, and our gospel choir as well. We also have an award-winning radio station on campus, um, a great theater department, um, and lots of opportunities for students that are interested in journalism, um, writing, and publication um, through the Guilfordian and the Greenleaf Review. Uh, we are Division Three Athletics on campus, and I'm going to turn it over to Ben, if you don't mind. Um, ben is one of our student athletes on campus, and he can tell you guys a little bit about the athletic program here at Guilford. Yeah, I represent our conference on a national scale, so I communicate with the NCAA, and that's for the ODAC. I play soccer and track, but as you become a Division Three athlete, you can stand out as an athlete for sure, but some of your role and your identity will shift as you get into college where I was the captain and playing every single minute of every single game and I got into college and I play maybe two thirds of a game, but most of my impact comes off the field. So going into Guilford, I didn't think that would happen and it really took a lot for me my freshman year to get over that. And now going into sophomore and junior year, Guilford begins to shape you not as an athlete because many of our athletes don't go pro, I think maybe 5%, but into young men and women or however you identify to go into the world. And that's what Guilford Athletics has been. We can talk about the numbers of how many athletes. There's about 30%. There's 400 athletes uh, at Guilford, just around there. And they have a huge impact. And you have a great brotherhood or sisterhood. But the impact for me comes off the field and, and what you're gaining in those experiences as a college student athlete. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. I've never heard it put better than that, truly. <laughs> I appreciate your perspective. All right, so most of you guys uh, in this session today are going to be starting your application process, if not already, um, pretty soon. Uh, so we're excited to kick off uh, our fall 2021 application cycle, and we are certainly ready uh, here in the admission office to start working with you throughout that process. Uh, I do want to give you some information about what we need for an application. Um, so first and foremost, we accept uh, the common application, the College Foundation of North Carolina application, and also the Guilford College application, which you can access via our website. Uh, it's always free to apply to Guilford on either of the application systems, uh, so you don't ever have to worry about paying an application fee. Uh, when we read your application, we do uh, look at your transcript, and we look at things like trends in your transcript. Um, we look at what types of classes you've taken. Um, so if you've challenged yourself with honors, AP, uh, dual enrollment, or IB courses, uh, and then finally, we look at your weighted GPA. Uh, so if you have had any weighted classes, we want to reward you for those. Uh, so we're going to look at your weighted GPA on your application, excuse me, on your transcript. Um, another large portion of your application is the extracurricular activities section. Uh, so this section is truly so important in a Guilford application. And I've seen time, time and time and time again how this one section has boosted a student scholarship. Uh, so I can't encourage you enough to take the time to fill out that section fully um, to really include bullet points or a description of the things that you've been involved in and the things that you're passionate about uh, and the things that you've, you've done throughout high school. Uh, we also uh, do require a personal essay on our applications, but you can write about anything. 
Um, and then we're a test optional school. Um, so students are able to submit their SAT or ACT scores, or um, you can submit a test optional essay uh, where you choose one of our core values and tell us what it means to you. Or another option is to submit a paper that you wrote in high school. Uh, either the test optional essay or a paper from high school will take the place of your SAT or ACT scores. Uh, we do not require letters of recommendation, but they are recommended if you're able to submit them. And we don't require an interview as well, um, but we would love to chat with you uh, if you would like to reach out prior to submitting your application. Uh, and finally, if you would like to submit an art, music, or writing portfolio as an additional piece to your application, uh, you're more than welcome to, although it is not required. Um, so deadlines, when, it, when is the application due? Uh, that's a big question on students' minds right now. So our application at Guilford, um, we encourage every student to apply um, with our early action deadline. Um, so you've probably seen the terms early action, early decision, and regular decision kind of thrown around um, recently as you've been working on college applications. Um, early decision means that it is a binding application, meaning that you commit to the college before you're aware of your financial information. Um, at Guilford, we do not encourage students to apply early decision. Um, however, we do encourage students to apply early action, which is a non-binding application. So you have plenty of time to submit your FAFSA, to apply to other schools if you would like, and to make um, a well-educated decision on where is the best fit for you to attend college. Um, our early action deadline is December 1st. Uh, if your application is in and we have all of the application pieces like your essay, your transcript, and your test scores or your test optional option, I guess you could say, um, then you will receive your decision no later than December 31st. Um, after the holidays, we go to regular decision. So if you prefer to apply in the spring, um, all applications that are received after January 1st um, will receive a decision within three or so weeks of completing your application. Um, I'll throw it out there too, if you wanna get on your application a little bit sooner, um, if you submit your application in like early October, we won't make you wait until December 31st to receive a decision. We'll try to turn it around um, pretty quickly for you so you don't have to wait too long. <laughs> All right, the big question, can I receive financial aid? Um, so here at Guilford, every single student that's admitted receives a merit scholarship. Uh, and that merit, a merit scholarship uh, means that that scholarship is based on your application and based on not only your academic work, but your work outside of the classroom as well. Uh, so if you're admitted, you will receive a merit scholarship, no question. Uh, so you can rest assured that um, you will be getting a scholarship to help bring down the cost of attendance here at Guilford. Our merit scholarships range from $10,000 to $25,000 a year. Um, we do put a freeze on tuition, so your tuition will not raise um, throughout your time as a student here at Guilford. Uh, we also have a few other scholarship opportunities that can be great opportunities uh, for students as well. Um, the first is the Bonner Scholars Program that's based on community service um, that Ben is a part of and described. Um, the second program is the Quaker Leadership Scholars Program, uh, which is a, a scholarship program for primarily Quaker students. And then our honors program as well offers some scholarships. If you're a highly academic student, you may consider um, wanting to apply to the honors program. Um, so our Bonner, our Quaker leadership and our honors program do require separate applications. Uh, and we do flag students um, based on information presented in the application, such as amount of community service, GPA, things of that nature. Um, we'd flag students while we're reading applications to be sent an additional application to apply for these separate scholarship programs. Uh, if you're interested in one of them, just reach out to your admission counselor and we are happy uh, to send you that application so you can apply. Uh, we do encourage every student to file the FAFSA um, because it allows you uh, to access as many grants and scholarships as possible. Uh, and if you're unable to file the FAFSA, we invite you to fill out uh, Guilford's financial assessment worksheet, which is kind of like an internal um, FAFSA application in a sense, where if you fill it out, it allows Guilford to award you some additional financial aid dollars. 
All right, so this brings us to the end of the official presentation. I appreciate you guys sticking with us. I am going to put Ben on the spot for a couple more minutes before we take a few questions. Um, ben, would you mind uh, sharing with students your experience um, with internships on campus and also the support that students receive as well? Yeah. I have had an internship every single semester that I've been at Guilford, and that's not to sound super romantic, like I'm doing good. It's just something that I've decided to do. And actually, it can be a bad thing because I'm doing too much. And I wasn't as focused on academics as I was with my internship. So I was working for the city of Greensboro and for a community center downtown, and I wasn't getting a 4.0 GPA. So that does change things. But for me, I was able to get credit with it and be sponsored by faculty members who were in the economics department and also in our social justice, our JPS studies, which is our justice and policy studies. Within this, I got real world experience and that's what Morgan and I want. Um, before we answer questions, I'll put my number and email down here if I can, because I'm not trying to, we're not trying to make you go to Guilford. We're not trying to make you make a college decision or sell you anything and in fact, I don't want to sell you something right now, but I want to put this so that we can say, hey, just to be and think about college, we can give you some of our experience. I'm two years older than you. I don't, I'm not smarter or better or anything, but with internships and anything like that, I'll put my number and just call me about like, should I even go to college? Because I've called my mentors on Guilford and be like, should I even return? And they should be like, I don't know. I really don't know, but here's what I know. And, and then we go into it from there. But it's not come to Guilford, we need you, we need you. It's, this is what we are. Um, and, and that's what you get through internships instead of who our 33rd president was. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talk a lot about Guilford. Uh, we talk a lot at Guilford uh, in the admission office about best fit with our students uh, because that's something that we truly believe in here at Guilford. Um, there are thousands of colleges in the United States and even more uh, throughout the world and we truly believe that there's a best fit college for every student. Like there, every student can find the right college, I promise you. Um, if you do your research and you look around, which is exactly what you guys are doing um, by joining these sessions. And even, you know, through a time like COVID, you're still putting in that effort and doing that work um, to research. And what, you know, when you do that, you'll be rewarded from that. You will find schools that um, you think will be a great fit for you that you want to eventually when you can actually go visit that you want to apply to um, and you're going to find your home um, at a school one day. So we're, we want to support you in that process and um, exactly what Ben was saying, you know, we want students to find the best fit college for them. All right, guys, so we have uh, just a couple questions in the Q&A. So I certainly want to address those uh, while we're here uh, on the session. Uh, if you have any more questions or anything popped up in your mind as we were chatting, um, definitely go ahead and type those into the chat now so we can address those while we're all here. And we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so one question, um, are the tutoring and writing center free? Uh, so that's a great question. And the good news is that yes, um, all of our tutoring services, our writing center, um, our services through the Accessibility Resource Center, and our counseling services on campus are all free for students. Uh, so you don't have to worry about paying like an additional, um, you know, an additional cost out of pocket uh, to access uh, those student, uh, access those services. Uh, the next question is, can you, or would you mind giving some more information about the honors program on campus? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I will say that one of the really neat things about Guilford's honors program is that all students that are or that apply and are accepted into the honors program uh, receive a fully funded uh, three week study abroad trip uh, one time throughout their studies here at Guilford. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for students to travel with a cohort um, from the honors program and to learn about a new culture and experience a new place. Um, when we are looking for students to flag to receive the separate application to apply to the honors program, uh, we are typically looking for students with GPAs at or above 4.0 and strong test scores or a strong um, test optional um, essay or paper from high school. Uh, so definitely, you know, if you're interested in honors um, and you would like to apply, feel free to reach out to your admission counselor, express that interest, 
and then we can certainly uh, make sure that the application is sent to you uh, so you can pursue that uh, as an option here at Guilford. Um, one more uh, question here. Um, where are our students typically from? Uh, so our students from the United States, where do they typically come from? Uh, so here at Guilford, we have about 65% of our students as it sits right now, about 65% of our students are North Carolina, about 35% from out of state. Uh, that number is up um, because many of our out of state students this year, um, many of our out of state first year students, so our students coming into college for the first time, um, didn't feel quite as comfortable going as far away from home um, with COVID. Uh, so our number of North Carolina students are up right now than they have been in the past. Um, but typically our students, uh, our domestic students come from the East Coast, typically. So North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Florida, Maryland, New York, and DC. Those are our larger territories and uh, in Pennsylvania as well. Uh, there you go, Ben. Um, those are our larger territories um, where we typically see the majority of our student body here at Guilford. All right, one more question from you guys. Um, are we currently doing in-person tours? Uh, so that is an awesome question that I've been spending lots of time um, working on and submitting um, proposals for along with my colleagues here in admissions um, throughout the past couple of weeks. So at this time, uh, we are not doing in-person tours. However, uh, we do hope to start doing um, by appointment only in-person tours, hopefully by the end of August, early September. Uh, so those things are in the works um, daily uh, right now so we can get started on uh, seeing visitors on campus and getting back to um, allowing students the opportunity to not only hear from us and talk with us, but actually see Guilford um, with their own eyes. So stay tuned on that one, um, but more information to come soon for sure. Whenever we start doing that, we would love to have you guys uh, down to campus if at all possible. All right, let's see here. Um, quick question from uh, maybe a, a future student athlete on campus. Um, asking or noticing that many of our baseball players are from North Carolina um, and asking uh, why that is. So I would say a couple of things. Um, first of all, our coaches here at Guilford, um, they have a variety of different uh, high schools and athletic coaches and travel teams that they know personally and that they have a lot of um, recruitment flow from. Um, so for baseball, um, our baseball coach has been here at Guilford for quite some time. And he has established um, quite a few relationships with high schools from North Carolina, in addition to um, travel baseball teams, which are very popular in this area. Um, so it is easier for our coaches to travel, you know, closer in proximity to North Carolina to watch students play, um, to observe them in games, to invite them to recruiting camps. Um, so that for the most part uh, explains that roster. Yeah, any other questions from you guys um, while we're here on the session? Ben, if you don't mind, um, while our students are thinking if they have any final questions, would you mind um, just, I, I'm not sure that you and I are actually able to type into the chat, um, but would you mind um, just speaking out if any student's interested, um, your, your name, of course, and your email address, your phone number, if you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you don't want it, don't write it. Um, if you just send me your name, I can see everybody's name here, so I'll notice it. My number is 302-766-1440. And my awesome. email is James, B as in boy, G as in goat, at guilford.edu. You can feel free to email me anytime about anything. It doesn't have to be Guilford related. I know that's an odd thing going on a Zoom session, but please feel free and I'm, I'm happy that you all are at least just inquiring about Guilford. Absolutely. And I threw this slide back up here on the screen um, so you could take one last look at it. But my email address is hillma2 at guilford.edu. And that's my cell phone number uh, listed there at the bottom as well. Please don't hesitate uh, to send me an email or give me a call uh, with any questions that you have uh, regarding the college application process, uh, the search process, um, or of course, uh, Guilford. So thank you all so much for joining us. We appreciate it and hope that you have a great evening. Talk to you later.
Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Morgan and Ben. Uh, thank you to everyone in the audience. When you close your window, there'll be a quick four question survey. And if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of feedback with us, we'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, we've got a, just a couple more sessions that are happening this evening with other CTCL colleges, if you want to check those out. Otherwise, thank you so much, everyone, and have a great evening. Thanks. Awesome. See you all later. Thanks, Dan. Ben?